I made this art print featuring this beautiful vintage fish illustration. Here's the original illustration. I also made this awesome nature print featuring a Scandinavian reindeer. Here's the original illustration. So in this video, I'm going to show you where you can find over 5,000 nature images. Things like butterflies, wildlife, and all sorts of weird wild creatures. These images are free and legal. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to put the link to where we're going here in the video description below. But if you're watching this on TV, you can just use Google. You can type in New York Public Library. And then what you want to do is type in open access. Okay, that's where we're going to start. This gets you to a bunch of stuff here. And the first result is public domain collections free to share and reuse. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. So we'll click on that. Okay. Now things start getting a little governmenty. So we see it says this page has been archived. It's no longer updated. Oh, all right. And then it says you can search the digital collections. You can visualize, you can update this, you can update that. There's just so much stuff on these web pages that it can be a bit overwhelming to find. So what I would recommend, again, you can go to the description in the video below, or you can click right here, the search digital collections. I'm going to click that. And now you're going to get to an even more overwhelming website. So this is the New York Public Library Digital Collections. Explore 900,000 items. And as you scroll down, there's just collections on top of collections on top of collections. And it's like, oh, yo, yo, where do I start? I just want to find some animal photos. Okay, so what you can do when you get to this page is instead of searching, you can just go to the little browse button. And specifically just to the right of the little browse button, there's a little drop down button and you can go to collections. So this is where it's buried. You're going to go to collections and now you can see grouped items. Now there's still 60,000, 70,000 in each collection, but it gives you at least an idea because if you're looking for fish pictures, you're not necessarily looking for Giza pyramid pictures. So this is what I'm going to click on here, this classic illustrated zoologies and related works. And again, I'll put this link in the video. So here we go. This is actually pretty cool. You're going to see 3,700, I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see it, 3,700 results found. And as I scroll through, we can see there's just pages and pages of pictures, text, pictures, text. Okay, and it just goes on and on, and then it will continue to scroll. Okay, you can also go on the left-hand side, and you can see in the, under this navigation, they've kind of done a, you know, a half-decent job here of showing you how many are in each. Now, I don't speak French, so I'm getting, you know, this is, looks like pigeons, okay, 88. The birds of Europe, 463. There's fish, 44. I'm going to click on this. The fishes of North America that are captured. And now we get to a book. So I'm going to open up that first page. And just so we can see what the title page says, The Fishes of North America that are Captured on Hook and Line by William C. Harris. So this is the actual book. And here's all the pages scanned into the book. So if you're like a fisherman person, we can see here, that's like an oil painting of a fish that you could use. So if you're making fish related items, you know, nature scapes and fish related stuff, this is it here. Now, what I love about this, you can zoom in. So I'm going to click the little zoom button. Gives you a nice, pretty, you know, pretty good looking fish design. And then as I scroll down, we can see here it says free to use without restriction. And there's the different download options. There's 760, 1600 pixels, 2560, and then the original. So when I click on the original, it just says, hey, do you want to download this? And I can then download it. You could also order an art print if you wanted, but hey, the whole point of this is to make your own art print, right? So this is a pretty cool option. We can go to the German trout. There it is there, same deal. And when I click on the zoom button, we can see as I scroll down, it's a little bit of a fuzzy, like it's a scan from an old book. So you can see it's a big picture, but you can see the, the actual 
text below is fuzzy. So this is why, if you're ever wondering like, well, why would you remake this and like make an art print? Because this text is fuzzy, it's, it's weathered, it might not be a perfect scan. So, you know, what you can do is take these pictures and if you know what the text is down below, you can remake this into a high-end art print using vector software. And then somebody who's like a fisherman person can have a higher-end art print on their wall. So that's one option. We've got the fishes here. We go back up to the top and we can see there's filters. So you can go to topic, name, collection, that sort of thing. And then again, under navigation, you can just click on another one. Now it says here the fishes of North America 44, but if I look through, I might be able to find another fish. Well, actually, I'm going to change switch gears here for a second. I'm going to go to butterflies of North America. There's 161. So when I click on that, we can see here now there's butterfly designs. And the reason I like these collections, I'm just going to open a couple up here. I'll close out these other ones. The reason I like these collections is because they're standardized, meaning that if you're going to make a large collection for t-shirts, coffee mugs, poster prints, whatever, they're all kind of the same, which is what you want. The background is similar. The artwork is similar. So this is great. If you're going to make like, say, a butterfly, you know, pillowcase or something, this is it. Same thing here. We can see here, I click the zoom button and we've got different butterflies now. Papilio is the other one. Awesome. So like if you're like really into butterflies, you could make like butterfly t-shirts, butterfly coffee mugs, art prints, whatever it is. And the whole idea here is that you've got just, you know, a million billion different items here that you can take a look at, all free to use. Now, again, I'm just going to show how it's free to use. I'll just open up one at random here. When you're looking at the page, you just scroll down underneath it, and then you can see the details and at the bottom. Okay, so it says here down at the bottom, the rights statement. It says the copyright and related rights statum of this item has been reviewed by the New York Public Library, but we were unable to make a conclusive determination as to the copyright status of the item. You are free to use this item in any way that is permitted by the copyright and related rights legislation that applies to your use. In other, in other words, they are just in other words, they are just completely removing themselves and saying, look, we don't know what this thing is. It's old. Feel free to use it. We have no evidence that this is in any way copyrighted by anyone else. Now, if you're wondering, hmm, how do I know if it doesn't say specifically public domain? There's two key things you can look at. One is, what is the date of the publication? If the date of the publication is old, i.e. over 100 years old, and this was in 1888 to 1897, so that's like over 100 years ago, chances are very high that it's in the public domain. Not always, but most of the time. So this is pretty good that this is going to be in the public domain. The second reason I like this is because there's no trademarked items on here. There's no New York Yankees. There's no Coca-Cola. There's no McDonald's. There's nothing on here that indicates it's in any way a trademarked item. So this to me is as good as it gets other than it's saying no restrictions, but I would recommend if you're using designs, like especially if you're taking screenshots of this and then you're removing backgrounds and you're you know, moving stuff around, ask yourself, what is the likelihood that anybody is going to know that you took it from this website? Like, who's the detective looking at your t-shirt and going, hey, I recognize that butterfly. And then they go and after 14 hours of research, they determine that it's actually part of this thing published 120 years ago. Like, come on, it's probably not going to happen, right? So I totally get that people are trying to do the right thing and we want to make sure we comply with trademark and copyright. But these are old vintage items on the New York Public Library website. These are in effect public domain. I understand there's always going to be a couple people that go, I'm not comfortable with them. You don't have to use it. But I will say for the most part, when you're looking at these old pictures, I'm just going to open up one here of this thingy here. Well, that's a pretty cool picture. Sea lion. You're, you're looking for something that says 
either public domain or they can't determine the copyright status of it. So as I scroll on down, you'll see it's been reviewed and we're unable to make a conclusive determination. Like in my mind, because it was published in 18, I believe it was 1839. Yeah, the date issue is 1839. Like there's no way anybody is going to be owning the copyright to this because that's what public domain means is it expires after a while. Trademarks never expire, by the way. Like if they get renewed, like Mickey Mouse is never going into the public domain. But this seal here, this angry looking sea lion, he's in the public domain. So you could remove the background. You could make that into a into a, a t-shirt. And again, just to be totally clear, I don't know that it's in the public domain. I'm just using my detective skills and thinking, what are the chances that somebody's going to tell me it is? Anyway, I don't want to get too hung up on public domain here. But if you're interested in the zoological works, there's like thousands of these along the left-hand side. Any, anything from moths. Check that out. All the different moths. This one's British fishes. We had another type of fish before. See, what I really like about these vintage ones, I'm just going to pop this fish picture open, is that the background is relatively benign, meaning it's easy to remove. So what I'm going to show you now for the remainder of this video is the before picture and then a couple options on how to make a design by removing the background, for example, or making a t-shirt or coffee mug, just sort of brainstorming. So there'll be a couple minutes of that. So I hope you found this helpful. New York Public Library Digital Collections. And there's a lot of cool animal pictures in here. Thousands and thousands of high quality animal scans that you can use if you're making some sort of art print.